All right, we're now ready to actually make our first pad stack. And we're going to go and do the LM741 here, the same one that we were looking at before. And I'm going to look here and see this is the pin that I'm going to be making a pad stack for. Now I have to first determine the geometry of this pin. Is it a circle, rectangle, square? Because remember, if I go back to my notes here, the maximum lead diameter is different depending on whether it's a circle, rectangle, or square. So going back to this, we can see here that this dimension is given down here. And remember, in this class, when you're given a maximum and a minimum, we're always going to use the maximum. So it's either 21 mils, 0.021 inches, or 0.53 millimeters. Now, we're always going to do millimeters for pad stacks. The reason is because our drill bits for our etcher are all in millimeters. So 0.53 millimeters. But now, is that a circle or is that a rectangle? And if we come over here and see, it gives us a little bit more information about the pin we can see that, well, it's clearly got to be a rectangle because this dimension right here is 0.25 millimeters. Okay, well, if I got 0.53 millimeters and 0.25 millimeters, I need to figure out what is my maximum lead dimension here. So let's pull up a calculator, and I'm going to do 0.53 squared plus... I already lost what the number was, 0.25 squared, Let's see what we get, 0 0.3435, 0 0.3434. Then I'm going to do the square root of that, and I get 58, or 0.586 millimeters. And so we would just round that to 0.59. Okay, so we now have that maximum diameter. So let's launch our program here. So the program is called Pad Stack Editor, and I've just started my menu here, and I just start typing the word pad, and this is assuming you're using the computers in the lab. Um, you can still get to it online. It's a little bit more annoying to get to it, but this is just assuming you're using the computers in the lab, and we can see Pad Stack Editor. So I'm going to open the Pad Stack Editor, and we're going to say, okay, well, what are we going to do here as far as we have to select a default pad geometry? And I'm going to first just go ahead and select circle. And we're doing a through pin here. That's our normal thing that we're doing. It's just a through pin. So the first thing we need to do is select the diameter, finished diameter. Now, let me actually move where I'm recording here because it wasn't showing you everything you needed to show. Um, the one thing we have to notice first off is that the units are in mils, which is very important because if you start typing the numbers in here, we're going to be wrong because we're using millimeters, not mils. So we need to convert to millimeter. And it's going to say units change will result in loss of accuracy. And what that's saying is if we had already entered numbers in, um, it's going to convert all of the, milli, um, the mils into millimeters, and the conversion between inches and metric isn't, you know, precise, and so you'll lose some accuracy. You never have to worry about that, though. So just say yes, continue to do that. So I'm in millimeters now. And so I have here zero um, millimeters as far as my finished diameter. So we already know that my maximum lead diameter is 0.59 because we're rounding. So let's go back to my notes here. And so if I go here, I know in my notes here that my maximum lead diameter, we're going to be using the level A is my maximum lead diameter plus 0.25 to get my max um, to get my whole drill size. So my whole drill size, my drill size here is going to be 0.59 millimeters 
plus 0.25 millimeters. And if I do that, and I don't, and I'm not an idiot, so I'm going to actually use a calculator here. <laughs> no, it seems a little silly. Um, I get 0.83 millimeters. Now, this is where we have to figure something out here. My drill bits, because don't put a, you, we don't want to enter 0.83. My drill bit sizes go in point. We have a 0.3 millimeter, which we don't want to really use. 0.4 millimeter, dot, 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 up to one millimeter. And then that once you hit one millimeter, it starts um, going up a little bit faster, like 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter, etc. So 0.83 millimeters. So I don't have a 0.83 millimeter drill bit. And most of you are probably saying, okay, well round. And that's exactly what we're going to do, except we're not really going to round like a normal convention. In fact, I wouldn't even call it rounding. Um, you may remember this in some algebra class. You may not. doesn't matter. There's a function that's called like a ceiling function, and we're not going to really um, worry about what the definition of that is. But we're going to say, well, we're always going to round up because even though 0.8 millimeters is the closest drill bit size to 0.83, if we're talking about wanting to make sure that the drill bit is the right size, if I go smaller, I could run into some problems. Now, I'm probably okay because I'm doing level A as far as 0.25 millimeters, but if you were doing level C and it was 0.15 millimeter and you chose the smaller drill bit size, you actually might make that hole too small, um, meaning that it, you might have to be very precise in getting that component, or if the lead is slightly bent, um, it's not going to fit in properly. So we are always going to round up. So we round up and we get 0.9 millimeters as my drill hole size. All right, so now I'm ready to go back to the pad stack editor. And I know, oh, 0 0.90. You don't have to put all the other zeros in, it automatically puts it in. And oh, there's this pretty little red circle there now. Um, we aren't going to ever worry about the tolerances um, or the drill tool size. Those are some more advanced features. Now, this is if you were wanting to define a pad stack where basically it was doing multiple um, holes at a time. Um, there are uses for that, um, especially like if you're doing some mounting holes where they might have tiny drill bits around the hole and stuff. Um, we're, we're not going to ever use that. Now. There is this idea of a secondary drill. Um, we won't ever use this. So there's something that's called back drilling. Um, and that's where you're kind of drilling in from uh, the bottom here. Um, there's also this counter bore slash sink. Um, you know, and you can see what that picture looks like. We're never going to use those. Now we do have to have a drill symbol. It seems a little weird because, well, we've, we've told it what the drill is here. This symbol is what is going to be on the actual um, program that we do the layout with. So we've defined what the drill bit is that I'm doing it, but we actually have to define the symbol. Now what's weird is I could define a square even though I'm drilling a round hole, which doesn't make sense because to the user it would look like you're drilling a square then. Um, as opposed to a round hole. So you really want to keep this symbol the same as whatever your drill is. And so we will just create this at 0 0.9. Drill offset. Um, you can see what the, the picture is showing you here. That's where like this is the center. And if you're doing an offset for it, um, I'm sure there are applications for that. Uh, I have never used that. Now we get to the design layers. Um, there's thermal pad, anti pad, and, and keep out. We're not going to talk about those. We're just going to talk about the regular pad. The regular pad is that copper pad. 
So we are going to say, well, begin layer is the top side of the board, end layer is the bottom. We're also going to do an internal layer. Um, and the reason we're going to do an internal layer is when you get into very complicated boards, you actually have um, layered boards in the sense that we're only going to ever do two layers, top and bottom. But like motherboards, um, I don't know, but I know there are at least seven layers, if not um, 15 layers, um, meaning that they have 15 layers of copper traces and they smash them all together. And then there's interconnects between those layers as well. And so that's what this internal layer is. Um, so we'll define that just so that we have a well-defined pad for all applications, even though we won't ever use it in this course. So we'll start with the begin pad. You got to select the geometry circle. Well, now I need to do the diameter of that copper pad. Okay, well, let's go back to my notes here. So my notes here, so I have 0.59 is my maximum drill hole size. And if I go down here for the copper pad, my pad size is 0.1 plus 0.6 to my maximum hole diameter. So the pad size is going to be 0 0.59 plus 0.1 plus 0.6, which is Math, don't fail me now. I believe it's 1.29. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said 1.29, which is correct, and then I wrote it wrong. 1.29 millimeters. Now, this we're also going to just round up or round down. This one you can round however you want to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. I mean, you could put in 1.29 millimeters, but um, all that's going to do is create annoyances for when we're um, actually etching the boards. So I would just say, okay, we're going to do this as 1.3 millimeters. Now, we could, again, use different levels, but this is assuming that we have a uh, low density. Now, again, this is for through-hole components. So... It's a circle. The diameter is 1.3 millimeters. And now you'll see, oh, look, there's this nice little blue. And now what we can see here is this red is the drill hole. And then this blue is what's going to be the copper that's remaining for us to solder the lead to. And now we have to do this internal layer and end layer, but they're going to be the exact same. Because, again, these are just copper um, landings. Now, this one's yellow, but you won't see it because it's looking, this is a top-down view. And then we'll also make this circle, and this diameter will be 1.3. Okay, so mask layers. So we got my design layers. Those are my copper pads. Mask layers here. Well, there's a lot of different mask layers, but remember, we are only looking at the solder mask and the paste mask. But for a through-hole component, we only look at the solder mask, top and bottom. Okay, well, with this, remember our rule that we were going to be using Let me get back to my notes here. is adding 0.07 millimeters. And so it seems a little silly to write something that specific, but that's what we're going to be doing here as far as this is going to be a circle. And then I'll just go back to my design later is 1.3. So this would be 1.37. And then my solder mask bottom, circle, 1.37. And 
And then there's these options, but we never use those. And then a summary. This is just summarizing everything that we have here. Now this save here is actually not saving the component. That's saving um, this <laughs> little web page here that was created and being displayed. So this save button actually just saves this information here. Um, and so this is just summary of everything we've entered. To save the pad stack, we'd actually click the save button up here. And you can see I have a ton of pad stacks that I've saved and I haven't followed um, the standard notation for that. And there's a reason why I didn't follow standard notation, but I won't go into that. These are on my computer at home, but let's follow the notation we need to follow for this course. So this is a circular pad. Now it's not because I, it's a drill that's circular. It's because the copper pad is circular. So this is C for circular, and then it is a 0.9, so 90 millimeters, because it's 0.9, and then the pad size is 1.3, so one, I'm sorry, I did this backwards, 130, because you do the pad size first, and that's 1.3 millimeters, then you do the drill bit size, which is 0.9, so that's 90, and then that would be enough normally for, to, for following the conventions, but remember we're tagging on our last name. And so this is a circle pad stack, 130, 1.3 millimeters, 90.9 drill bit. And then that's it. So it's actually really easy to do. And I, I took a lot longer than we probably needed to do it, but I wanted to go slow enough so that you could see all the steps that were involved in creating this pad stack.